Okay, guys, let's quickly look at what we got so far. We got a client that is generating address. This address can be checked in a widget. We can copy the address. We can change the network that we are using. The network change is uh, affecting the updating of the values. So if we go back to Polygon, we got this, those values. And we have actual balance. And this is actual live Matic coins on the live network that we have. So what we want now is to unstuck this value and be able to send it to another wallet and just, uh, you know, use it, utilize it. So let's construct our first transaction. Okay, so we got this widget, we go into design and we have this uh, one input field, second input field and send. So first of all, let's do stuff when someone inputs values into those fields. So we got those input fields. Let's go to this inputs field and we have two events on text change and on text committed. On text change means that every time we type uh, anything in it, it's going to run this function. We don't need that. We want on text committed. So let's click on text committed and we have committed methods. So let's do switch and let's see what are the committed methods. Is default enter user moved focus uh, cleared? Uh, I don't care which one. Is it? We want to do update on all of them. So we got this text and we want to see if this input text is valid Ethereum address. So is it Ethereum uh, is valid Ethereum address? We got a function like this. It's taking up string and this is text, but we can convert uh, text to string without any loss of signs or anything. And we can do this validation. And now based on this validation, we can do this and we can say, okay, let's do that. So this is valid. This is not valid. So we want to go and how is it called? How is it called to, to, to send to, okay. So we need to reference to send to, no, not this one. Mm. Why couldn't I just type it? Oh, sent to my bad. I, I name it badly a bit. Um, let's maybe rename it. Uh, and compile. Yeah, it changed. Okay, so sent to uh, set error text. So if it's false, we want to set error text and the error text will be um, blockchain address not valid and if it is true and it is valid we want to set uh, you know what we want to clear um, clear the error so if there was error previously and we set proper text we want to clear the error and we want to do one more thing and I want to actually copy a function Uh, and I want to paste it here. Okay. So I want to take specific color and I want to specify this widget and I want to set everything the style as it was. Uh, and then I want to set it by reference basically. So I want to collapse this to a function and call it uh, style uh, set style color okay and we definitely don't need two of those we just need one and we're not going to call it self we're going to call it widget because it can be a different widget uh, and we're going to reuse this function a lot uh, so we want to do this and we want to do this here as well. Oh, target is self. Yes, of course. Widget is this. Okay. Uh, and we want to expose this specific color. So this specific color is going to be called background color. Um, and return 
node we need to add one here yes okay so specific color for clear error and this being valid let's make it like like this and let's make it uh, just this and for error we want to make it like dark okay and now we can copy those nodes and put them elsewhere if we are we want to do uh, text validation so <clears throat> send to text validation but there's one more thing that we need to do we need to actually store this address uh, somewhere to be reused so we want to also promote this to a variable and want to call it send to address and only if it is true we want to set it if it is false we want to either you know what we still want to set it but we want to set it to an empty string which is not a valid address on purpose because we can check its validity uh, later on so we got this we got this okay let's try it so if i hit run now i go here i just type some gibberish Okay, blockchain address not valid. If I go to my wallet and I copy my address, okay, copy it and I paste it here, it becomes green and I cannot read anything anymore. So I need to make it like a dark green, super dark green because the text is white. Now it should be more uh, user friendly. So let's do that. Enter and I can read it. It's green. It's a valid address and it's being stored. So now the amount, uh, this will be more tricky because we need to check if we have enough in the balance. So we go here and do the same thing. Uh, on text change, no, not interested. On text committed, definitely yes. So we got this text, we definitely need to do it to string. And when we have it as string, we can do um, um, tree studio blockchain. Those are methods, those are okay. Uh, eat value from string with fractional okay eat value from string and by default we want to have input that is in iter so if we put a comma out that we are reading it as full iter uh, for, for the value so on successful if this is even successful then we want to promote this uh, to a variable and this variable will be send value now before we do that we need to check if this send value is even valid so if we have already balance uh, wallet balance we need to see if send value is smaller or equal than wallet balance um plus 21000 which is the cost of uh, minimum cost of sending a transaction so send value must be less or equal uh oh no 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 it has to be uh hmm yeah we need to minus drink 21000 so balance minus the fees and the sending must be uh, in this range and if it is false then we want to set set balance uh, to make um, you know what to just this so if our send balance goes above our entire balance then we want to just set it to maximum and if 
this is true, we are already setting it, so we don't have to do anything anymore. Uh, okay. C set um, value to send. Um, or maybe we don't want to do that. You know what? Let's do something different. Let's first of all take this. Let's get our what's the name of this uh, particular one? It's a month. We want to get a month and we want to definitely set the colors first. So this is is less than this, so it's true. Is false, then it's red. And we do want to do also clear error and set error text as well. So set error text for this amount will be um, amount not valid or exceeding balance. So if this conversion is not working out, then we are going straight to this as well. And we're going to do a reroute so we see clearly where is it going. Okay. <clears throat> and this is cleaning the error. And we have this set. If false, we are not setting any value. Okay. Okay, we're not cutting down to maximum. We're just doing this. So let's test it. Oh, wait. We got something missing. Oh, yes, this, this connection needs to go here. Uh, so we see every connection everywhere. Okay. <laughs> Let's test it again. Full screen. Okay. Tab. Open our wallet. Uh, send to. I already have copied my address. Oh, no, I haven't. I was copying something else. Oh. I got like a lot of stuff here. You know what? It will be faster to just restart. Okay, let's go to my wallet. Copy. Send to. Paste. Valid. Amount. Okay, let's type gibberish. Okay, not valid, of course. Uh, 55. Not valid, of course. 1. It is valid. 0 0.001. Uh, not valid or exceeding balance. Interesting. And if I put a comma, it is the same. Oh. Okay. So for comparison, because this is complex math, we don't want to use this. Uh, we want to actually um, use a different function. Uh, with fraction value, this one, this is not a pure function. Uh, yeah, so we want to use this one, it's just a lot more reliable. The previous one is for display purposes, this one is for actual use cases, and we might want to also um, okay, let's test it now. One, two, one point twenty four, okay, one point twenty three, okay, zero point twenty three, okay, it's still valid, zero point zero 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 one, it is still valid, okay, one point two three four five six, five six, and instead of seven eight, okay, it's not valid. Uh, so we got amount check done. Now let's do the max, the max amount. Mm, let's go to the button. Button on clicked. <coughs> and we're going to do some uh, stuff here. So basically we got 
uh, amount we want to get this text mm, and we want to get balance uh, get wallet balance which is like direct ve value and want to extract a string 21,000 this must be a decimal ve value you can't put commas in here you can't make it a fraction it must be integer uh, value so we are reducing it by 21,000 and we are setting it as set balance uh, to string and we can just say um, two decimal string and the exponent is 18 uh, minimum fraction is zero max is this okay and want to set text set text in the text <laughs> pretty much and just do this now I don't know if this is also calling this or not so let's check uh, let's just do a test hello here and see how it works because I'm not fully sure how widgets work so if I go here I go here I paste again something which I should not oh, I still keep on forgetting I need to copy the address again okay copy address uh, good we got a validation that it is not a, a proper wallet address this is okay and now for uh, a month if I click my oh if I write like one it's saying test hello and it's doing twice because I hit enter and I also change the value okay hello hello okay one hello hello okay and if I say max it's not saying hello so it is basically taking the maximum value of my balance and reducing it by the transaction fee that I am able to pay and this is a very specific 18 digits number and it is precisely calculated so I will zero out my entire balance if I make this transaction and I send everything to myself so now I want send button to actually do something so let's do that this will be the last uh, part in this wallet series and I'm once again saying that I'm going to give this entire project for free so you can uh, run it yourself integrate it into your game or do with it whatever you want uh, max value so 21,000 is just the gas price for for the transaction that you would be doing uh, Oh. oh, I should probably calculate this. Oh, never mind. Okay, um, I'm going to fix it in a moment. Let's go here and let's do the send transaction finally. So let's do on click. So when you click, you are sending transaction. So to send transaction, we need to do a few things. First of all, we're going to get our refresh timer. And we're going to say pause timer by handle okay we, we want to pause it because we don't want it to refresh values while we are performing a transaction then we need to refresh the transaction count and we need to refresh it with not latest but pending then we need to get the gas uh, price which is also very important and lastly should we refresh the balance i don't think we really need it because we already know the balance and it is changing whenever we submit a transaction so we might want to refresh balance later on at the end of everything so now we want to construct the actual transaction so we got it <coughs> sign transaction and we have a send row transaction so send row transaction is the main 
transaction sending function that you can use uh, inside Ethereum uh, protocol. So we get uh, config, which we stored. And we're going to split it and push it into URL. And now we have the signed transaction data here. So in order to send the transaction, we need to first create it. So it's sign transaction asynchronously. So right now we're doing the signature. This is the important part and this is like the heavy duty of, of the entire uh, sending transaction. So we need a number of values. First being the wallet key that we have stored locally. Second is the um, integer nonce that we are storing here as well and we just refreshed it. Then we have the gas price that we also refreshed recently and it is in UN256. Then we have the gas limit that we don't know yet. And then we have the um, address we want to send to and we have created to uh, this as well. But before we try to send this transaction, we want to check if it's a valid Ethereum address. So before we sign, we're making once more sure that it is valid. Okay, if it is valid, then we are sending this transaction. Value is send value. We can send a transaction with value of zero, so even a, a default one. And then data. Data is being used to call functions on smart contracts. This is something we are going to cover, but we are going to cover it in a different tutorial. And then we have chain ID. We need chain ID from the uh, blockchain configuration. And then we have the deterministic signing, which is an option for any transaction inside this protocol. But I strongly recommend not to sign deterministically, so you leave it at default no. Which means that using the same inputs, creating a new transaction, will always end up with a different signed transaction hash uh, and encoding. So just don't. Uh, if you sign deterministically, using the same values will always end up with the same values. So gas limit, what is the gas limit? For the gas limit uh, for our current transaction, which is just uh, sending monetary value, it's not call on a smart contract. We can just make it value from string uh, or we can with fractional. So this one is the more reliable one, not the pure function. And it is very important for it to be reliable. So we're doing this and we're checking if it's a success. I mean, it will be hard not to be a success if we hard code it to be 21,000 VEI. Uh, but yeah, this is our minimum gas limit to not even consider our transaction. For call of a smart contract, you will require to calculate this value and input it uh, directly from in a different way, which we'll be covering in the tutorial later on. But right now we are signing this transaction. We got all the inputs, the data is being empty, send deterministic false. This is an async function. So when this function succeeds, uh, we get the signed transaction, message hash and transaction hash. So we can get the signed transaction as an input and put it to the signed transaction data. And we can just uh, send it on success. And when this is successful, we want to print string, append, success, transaction, hash, and we get a unique ID of the transaction that we can even use to refer to Blockchain Explorer and find the transaction. So you know what? When we get this, we might even want to copy it to clipboard, but hmm, I don't really care about it right now. We will see it in the it scan anyway, <coughs> if it succeeds. So we got now one asynchronous function followed by a second asynchronous function using this uh, output. We're not storing it in between because 
this finish of execution and this start of execution happens in a single frame. So even if some of those data change, we don't really care. And if everything is successful, then we are doing this. Um, if it falls, we want to print string and we want to get this response, break the response and just get the body of the response and see what the hell happened. This will be very helpful. So we can now wrap all of this into a macro as well. Collapse to a macro and this is send row transaction. And here we can have success and failure. But this is success or failure of the final send. Uh, it doesn't go from here to failure. It doesn't go from here. And this is actually something we want to do. So we want to do this. Connect it like here. We want to do this. Like this is also a failure if this fails. And we want to do this. And we want to know that the transaction failed because of any reason if it failed and this happens if it succeeds. So after we are done, we want to get our timer like we did. Refresh timer. Uh, we want to um, refresh balance on success. And we want to say pending. And then we want to um unpause yeah it's unpause timer when this is successful and if it fails we want to unpause immediately okay so this will now be on click send transaction and if i hit play now and I make sure that I again copy my address <laughs> properly. <laughs> and I go back to my game. I hit tab. I open the wallet. I input the send to to my address. And I want to send 0 0.98765. Enter. I want to send this exact amount that should be taken from my balance and I should get a transaction hash as a print string when I do that and this pause this should pause for the time that I am sending the transaction. I am on Polygon mainnet, I have a positive balance, let's test it out. So sent, it's paused, it's completed, I got a success and it has updated properly. So let's go to my wallet inside MetaMask. And if I go into, let's go to uh, Polygon Scan. Let's find my wallet. And we have a transfer 23 seconds ago for 0 0.98765 Matic. The transaction fee was, uh, where well, here are cents. So this is, uh, five of a hundred of a cent. So that's very low fee for a transaction. Um, yeah, it went successful 23 seconds ago. So I actually see this in my balance right now. It's not like here are cent uh, transactions, not incoming ones, <coughs> but my uh, balance is being updated due to this transaction. So. Within very short time, we created identity for the client, which is like a persistent identity that we are storing inside a save game file. Based on this identity, we can send messages to the blockchain network. We can use multiple blockchain networks at the same time without any uh, problems, and we can query them. We get a valid balance and we can receive uh, funds and receive transactions and messages as well as sign and send transactions and messages.